federal government pledges support for ECOWAS Community Court of Justice. Court orders Nigerian police to unfreeze Peace Call Bank account. Many thanks for joining us on Judiciary Watch. On today's episode, the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, takes center stage on our discuss. The candidates for the office of chairman and the candidates for the office of a secretary should all step down, meaning those who contested and won and were sworn in, and those who were appointed by the NEC uh, meeting in Benin should all step down, and then the branch should go ahead. And then at that uh, 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 NEC uh, meeting, Johnny Agim Esquire, a very dedicated member of the Nigerian Bar Association, is our guest today. Please don't go away. Keep watching Judiciary Watch for deep knowledge of the law. Issues bordering on our collective and individual fundamental rights. For knowing the correct perspective of the law. Issues of governance. You just watch Judiciary Watch. Because it's no program. I just like it. The federal government has assured the Community Court of Justice of ECOWAS, CCJ, of its continued cooperation and institutional support. Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, stated this at the 2017-2018 New Legal Year opening ceremony, themed Current Trends in International and Regional Commercial Arbitration. He was represented by the Solicitor General of the Federation, Dayo Akwata. The ECOWAS Community Court of Justice, CCJ, is a principal legal organ of the ECOWAS community that plays a crucial role in the integration process of the West African sub-region. It has the exclusive responsibility of interpreting and applying the revised treaty, the protocols and conventions, and all other subsidiary legal instruments of ECOWAS. This is a CCJ New Legal Year opening ceremony, having in attendance representatives of the ECOWAS member state as well as key stakeholders in the CCJ host state, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Speaking in French language while declaring the New Legal Year open, President of the ECOWAS Community Court of Justice, Justice Jerome Traore, delved into the theme current trends in international and regional commercial arbitration, where he stated that the Community Court of Justice thought that the time has come to determine in concrete terms the content of the arbitral function of the court, which is why the 2017-2018 theme for the opening ceremony of the new legal year is devoted to issues of arbitration. In his keynote address, Nigeria's Honorable Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakr Malami, I show the CCG and indeed the ECOWAS community of its continued cooperation and institutional support. He was represented by the Solicitor General of the Federation, Dayo Akpata. I therefore wish to utilize this opportunity to reassure your noble lords of the continued cooperation and institutional support of the Federal Government of Nigeria. I enjoy your lordship to continue to exercise the court's jurisdiction with all fairness and dedication so as to deepen law and order within the community and all, i also crave the indulgence and support of the reform efforts of the federal government of nigeria for his part speaker of the ECOWAS parliament mosofa Siselo, stated that there's an urgent need to encourage alternative dispute resolution adr among economic agents especially on commercial transactions he was represented by the chairman ECOWAS parliament committee on administration finance budget control and audit Senator Mohammed Lafiegi will agree with me that if we have solid guidelines and dispute resolution mechanism for international contracts and investment, the more attractive our region will be for international trade and development. These will include, but not limited, to investment in agriculture, veterinary, and fisheries, uh, health, research, development in science and technology, industrial technology, petroleum and other extractive industries, tourism and the hospitality industry, communication and transportation. The importance of the ECOWAS Community Court of Justice as a major regional forum 
for dispute resolution cannot be overemphasized. It is hoped, however, that the continuous strict adherence to court orders by citizens of ECOWAS member state will be applied in the ECOWAS Community Court of Justice. Imanol Bagudu, PTV News. A federal high court sitting in Abuja on Tuesday ordered that the various accounts of the Peace Corps of Nigeria, PCN, be unfrozen with immediate effect. The Nigerian police had shortly after arrested the national commandant of the Corps, Dixon Akko, and 49 others on February 28, 2017, froze about 24 accounts spread across various banks in Nigeria belonging to members of the trustees and officers of the PCN. However, the police approached the court on June 23, 2017 with an ex parte motion to seek court's backing on the already frozen accounts. It could be recalled that the Peace Corps of Nigeria filed a motion on notice on the 5th of July 2017, accompanied by a 28-paragraph affidavit, urging the court to declare null and void the post no bill order on the various accounts of its members. While the matter was ongoing at the Federal High Court, the police also sought for and obtained a preliminary injunction from a magistrate court in Wuse Zone 6, Abuja, even as it also got the same injunction from the Federal High Court. However, delivering ruling on the motion on notice of 5th of July by the PCN on Tuesday, Justice John Soho set aside the preliminary injunctions earlier granted by his court and the magistrate court in Wuse. <laughs> Justice Soho lambasted the counsel to the Nigerian police James Idachaba for continuing to file motions when the matter had already been taken up by the Attorney General of the Federation. He said the Attorney General of the Federation is the Chief Law Officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and holds the right to prosecute state matters. The motion filed by Idachaba did not have the support of the Attorney General of the Federation and is tantamount to abuse of court process and the order of interim freezing of the 24 bank account belonging to the Peace Corps of Nigeria is hereby discharged. Justice Soho added that a situation whereby a criminal charge is being prosecuted by the counsel assigned by the AGF and the Dachaba also comes up to prosecute some motions in respect of the suit is highly complicated and confusing. He therefore gave the Attorney General of the Federation up to the next adjourned date, which is 24 October 2017, to clarify the misconceptions on the appropriate channel of service by the parties involved in the matter. If you're just joining us, this is Judiciary Watch. It is time for a short break. Please stay tuned for Judiciary Watch Discuss. You just watch Judiciary Watch. Because it's no program. I just like it. Welcome back. Every nation has an organized body of professional lawyers responsible for upholding the dignity of its justice system. Here in Nigeria, the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, is the only legal body that unites all licensed lawyers called to the Nigerian Bar. We will be delving into the current state of the Nigerian Bar Association. This will come to you right after the background report. The Nigerian Bar Association NBA is a non-profit umbrella professional association of all lawyers admitted to the bar in Nigeria. It is engaged in the promotion and protection of human rights, the rule of law and good governance in Nigeria. It has an observer status with the African Commission on Human and People's Rights and a working partnership 
with many national and international non-governmental organizations concerned with human rights, the rule of law, and good governance in Nigeria and in Africa. The NBA is made up of 109 branches, 3 professional sections, 2 specialized institutes, 6 practice cadre forums, and high level leverage in the political society in Nigeria. Its national secretariat is managed from Abuja. Its organizational structure comprises a national executive committee, a national officers management board, sections, forums, committees, working groups, and a national secretariat with a manpower strength of 34 staff as of June 2010. You just watch Judiciary Watch. Because there's no program that is like it. We're here at Legal Ascent to meet with Johnny Agim. He is a lawyer, he is an arbitrator, a notary public, and currently he is the vice chairman of the Human Rights Committee of Abuja branch of the NBA. Thank you, sir, for coming on this episode of Judiciary Watch. Yes. So to, today we are here and we want to look at NBA in perspective. So uh, I'm sure you can put, you know, uh, our curiosity in the right places. All right. Uh, once again, you're welcome. And I think basically I should say that MBA, like you know, the motto of MBA is promoting the rule of law. So basically that is what's in one sentence. That is what MBA represents. Okay. Okay, but um, I, I will still ask, what is MBA all about? That's the Nigerian Bar Association. What is it all about? MBA basically has several, the aims and objectives of MBA are very numerous. Uh, and as, of course, encapsulated in the 2015 amended constitution of the NBA, even though that in itself, there are issues that I will not want us to talk about for now. Okay. Uh, there are several aims and objectives. The NBA promotes rule of law. The NBA promotes the, uh, the advancement of consensus legal education. The NBA are there to ensure that there's, uh, as it were, service for those who are indigent in our society. You have MBA, part of the function of the MBA is to ensure that our laws are most times and at every point in time where there are needs for amendments, they are amended and all of that. So MBA has a whole lot of functions that it provide, including acting as a pressure group, which is very, very fundamental. Pressure group to every arm of government. Okay, so uh, how is the NBA imparting on, li on the lives of lawyers in Nigeria and uh, the Nigerian citizens at large? All right, since one of its functions or aims and objective is to ensure and promote continuous legal education, you will agree with me that as lawyers going through the law school, you always have sessions where the NBA as a body will come have a session where they'll get to speak with lawyers on what their ethics of profession entails, and of course that is equally provided for in the Legal Practitioners Act, uh, Cap 207, uh, Laws of Prevention of uh, 1990. Uh, so definitely that is one major role that the NBA plays in ensuring that lawyers practice law based on the professional ethics as laid down by the Act itself. Okay, so how about the citizens at large? Citizens basically, one of the aims and objectives of MBA basically is to ensure that, particularly for those who are indigent, they provide, they appoint some of their members who act as uh, aides to some of these persons who, uh, as it were, will not have the resource to approach to get a lawyer and then get to defend themselves. So MBA ensures that some of these, these categories of persons are well represented and then they have access to the courts and then so that they equally enjoy the benefit of those who are well to be in the society. Mm, okay. Mm. Thank you. So um, uh, in, as a whole, looking at the Nigerian Bar Association, how influential is it to the government? That's the Nigerian government. Uh, MBA as it were, without sounding bias, because I'm one. Uh, I doubt if there's any body or board of government in Nigeria, particularly at the federal level, that you will not find at least one member of NBA represented at that board. That tells you that basically 
because of course we are trained as lawyers we are meant to guide those who go for solutions or those who uh, uh, as a pair uh, uh, advance governance in the society members of MBA are appointed to be members of those boards so that they can provide the basic uh, guidance that they need so that we don't have a government or a board of government that comes out with some policies that are uh, uh, against the uh, the society as it were and then runs foul to uh, the laws of the land. So MBA has that as one of its role being uh, an association that the members are appointed to be part of this board to provide those guides. And then most times when government itself tend to go foul of the law, MBA will normally will say in most instances the MBA president will come out and make a press release. And that in itself is a way of influencing the policies of government. Okay, thank you, sir. So, um, what are the major challenges the, the, the MBA faces in trying to carry out uh, its mandate? You will agree with me that every organ of human endeavor will always have challenges. So, the MBA itself is not isolated. They, are equally, they equally have some of those challenges. But uh, I think the one that has become very, very notorious, if I must use that word, is the outcome of the last MBA elections, um, meaning uh, the 2016 uh, uh, elections. That, of course, was meant to be a test run of the universal suffrage. Uh, and that's, I mean, every lawyer who has paid their dues as at when due, both at the national and the branch level, and are, have registered, qualified to vote, were meant to vote for the leadership of MBA. But of course, I, I don't want to believe that you don't know because it's already out there in the public domain. That's, that needs a three up series of challenges. One of which is the fact that there was a challenge as to or a contest in courts. And if, of course, the, even the, court, the Federal High Court, uh, uh, Koram Soho uh, J, gave the judgment nullifying the Constitution, the amended Constitution of 2015. And that's, of course, true the generality of lawyers and the public into uh, uh, confusion. But as it were, we are told by the NBA presidents, particularly at the last uh, annual general meeting, that the NBA, the, the National Executive of NBA, have been able to find a way around it by registering the Constitution at the, at the Corporate Affairs Commission. So we want to say, to a large extent, it has reduced that challenge. But however, there's still the other challenge of the contestant who contested, particularly for the post of the president, who, as it were, I, I think I read in the papers a couple of days ago that the matter is slated for hearing on 10th, 9th and 10th of November. Uh, sorry, excuse me to cut you short. Yes. The, this election you're referring to is yes. the national... The national na yes. MBA election. MBA election, yes. okay. Yes, the one that brought yes. in... Uh, A.B. Mahmoud. Yes, okay. A.B. Mahmoud, S.A.M. Yes, yes. Yeah. So now there's a matter in court, and of course, depending on where the pendulum swings, that in itself might throw up some other challenges that we cannot foresee as we speak right now. But of course, before now, if it wasn't because of the adult suffrage uh, that was introduced, I'm sure before now we've never had instances where the national elections will resort to where uh, uh, parties will have to resort to court. But that in itself too tells you that there is equally another fundamental problem. And that is because by virtue of the MBA, amended MBA Constitution of 2015, uh, Section 16 of that Constitution makes provision for the setting up or the appointment of the dispute uh, resolution committee by the MBA, which was not done. Because if that was in place before the elections, automatically that provides for the mechanism to deal with issues like that. But because that was not in place, of course, it left the, the, uh, the persons involved here to, with no option than to approach the court, which is uh, in itself is the first in its kind. So those are, these are just some of the few challenges that you want to say, okay, fine. Uh, it's bedeviling the MBA. And then I don't want to now, if you now bring it down to the branch level, the branch that I belong to, we equally have our challenges and all of that. So I'm sure maybe in the course of our discussion, we'll, we'll Yes, I, as I, I was going to bring that up. Uh, next year, 
Yes. Uh, it's the the by elections again the, yes. for the national, yes. and which will bring in the next uh, executive. Yeah, executive to yeah. that would even post the uh, annual general meeting. Or no, we'll not host it. No, we'll it, be normally he'll be sworn in. He'll be sworn in at that. Uh, okay, at that. And at yeah. the next uh, AGM. Yeah. What what should what should we expect? Well, uh, I mean, I'm sorry okay. to say, I I'm saying this because mm -hmm. we just talked about the challenges. And I want to take us back to the conflict that arose from the election for the Abuja branch. You know, it was um, there was some there were so many comments about the Nigerian Bar Association not being won. You know, and they were they were not uh, good comments. So, what should we expect? Well, uh, I agree with you that the the, uh, the last one year, as it were, running into two years, has not been. Uh, one of good testimony concerning the NBA. Uh, but I always liken this to what will normally happen even in a nuclear or maybe a standard families where you have disputes, disagreements. And I expected all the dramatic personnel, the, the persons involved, to understand that NBA is one body that we all belong to and we must do all we can to ensure that we don't pull that house down. Because, as it were, I, as it were, even though I want, I, I want to say, okay, fine, we've moved beyond that point. We are hoping that next year we won't have this challenge. Uh, um, uh, it's, it's, it's something that, if only the needful was done as that when it was expected, we wouldn't have gotten to where we are. So I'm expecting that, basically, NBA, based on its uh, zoning formula, the presidency has been zoned to be. Eastern Bar, because in NBA we have the Western Bar, the uh, Northern Bar, and then the Eastern Bar. So the Eastern Bar comprises of the states in the Southeast and some states in the South South. So we are hoping that the next president will come from the Eastern, Eastern Bar zone. And uh, beyond coming from there, we want to believe that the president or whoever will em emerge from that, uh, that zone will be somebody who will be able to be a bridge builder who will be able to get all parties, both the current disputants, meaning those, uh, the A.B. Mahmoud and then uh, Chief J.K. Gazama, S.A.N. as well, who is uh, challenging his election. And then we want to believe that the candidates who will match, which is why I will pray seriously that we don't make the mistake of just electing anybody who chooses to contest for that office. Rather, we should, when I mean we, now I'm talking about lawyers, generally should consider someone who will be a bridge builder, mm -hmm. someone who will be able to talk to all the parties, bring them to table to, um, to, uh, to terms to understand that uh, uh, we are one big family, disputes are bound to happen, people are, are bound to offend uh, some other persons, uh, 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 persons are bound to take sides, but beyond that, the main and the sole aim of MBA, which is for it to act as that pressure group that will ensure that government is on its toes and then will be there to guide governments where there's need for guidance. It's, uh, uh, it's one big happy family. And so that uh, both the MBA, lawyers in Nigeria, and then the society will be the better for it. So yes. uh, last but not the least question, mm -hmm. what would you advise should, uh, should uh, to be the attitude of lawyers towards uh, helping the MBA achieve greatness? Basically, you know, we are... A lawyer, as it were, is a tool of social engineering, and that is what law is all about. Uh, lawyers who are trained in the finest tradition of law, and we are meant to be role model in society, uh, in character, in words, and in our deeds. So my advice generally will still be that, because that is the tripod within which uh, 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 the training of a lawyer rests on. And we should still continue playing that role and believing that if we do our bit and every other part of society is uh, catches up, then the society will be better for it. Thank you very much for coming on uh, this episode and giving us this wonderful information. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. You just watch Judiciary Watch. Because it's no program. I just like it.
Square Judiciary Watch ends today. We will appreciate all your comments and contributions on our social media and email platforms displayed on your screen. And always remember that being law-abiding is pertinent to the nation's growth and development. I am Augusta Yaku. See you next time.